or advising and solicitation uh, restrictions. A practitioner may not, uh, with respect to any internal revenue service matter, in any way use a partic or, or participate in the use of any form of publication, public communication, or private solicitation advertising containing a false, fraudulent, or coercive statement or claim. So clearly, advertising is becoming more and more important. The whole goal of the profession is is to maintain credibility. So it's kind of similar. You can you can compare it to other professions like the medical profession, which is one of the oldest uh, types of professions. And if you're if the medical profession, you have someone advertising snake oil that's going to say that's going to cure every known disease to man. Obviously, that advertisement again is if it drives clients is profiting off of the goodwill of not that person but off the profession in general and is therefore dampening the profession in general so that's the profession itself has a has has a incentive to stop that that kind of the kind of uh, poaching type of thing that people will do with a false advertising and lies and coercive statements so uh, so, or misleading or deceptive statements or claims. So basically lying kind of in advertising. So then the question of course is, well, what does that mean? You know, what is that? Enroll agents, enrolled retirement plan agents or registered tax return preparers in describing their professional designation may not utilize the term certified or implied an employer employee relationship with the internal revenue service. Examples of acceptable descriptions for enrolled agents are, quote, enrolled to represent taxpayers before the Internal Revenue Service, end quote. So obviously that's kind of a long statement, but they're trying to be clear uh, that that you're not like employed at the Internal Revenue Service, right? They're trying to distinguish what the actual rule is, quote, enrolled to practice before the Internal Revenue Service, end quote, admitted to practice before the Internal Revenue Service, end quote. Similarly, examples of acceptable descriptions for enrolled retirement plan agents are, quote, enrolled to represent taxpayers before the Internal Revenue Service as a retirement plan agent and enrolled to practice before the Internal Revenue Service as a retirement plan agent. An example of the acceptable description for a registered tax return preparers is, quote, designated as a registered tax return preparer by the Internal Revenue Service, end quote. Advertising and solicitation restrictions continue in here. So a practitioner may not make directly or indirectly an uh, uninvited written or oral solicitation of employment in matters related to the Internal Revenue Service if the solicitation violates federal or state law or other applicable rule, e.g. attorneys are precluded from making a solicitation that is prohibited by contact rules applicable to all attorneys in their states of license. So any lawful solicitation made by or on behalf of a, a practitioner eligible to practice before the Internal Revenue Service must nevertheless clearly identify the solicitation as such and if applicable, identify the source of the information used in choosing the recipient. Standards with respect to tax returns and documents affidavits and other papers. So uh, tax returns, a practitioner may not willfully, recklessly, and through gross incompetence sign a tax return or claim for refund that the practitioner knows or reasonably should know contains positions that A, lacks a reasonable basis, B, is an unreasonable position as described in section 6694A2 of the Internal Revenue Code, including the related regulations and other published guidance. So if, if it's clear that you're taking a position on the tax return, which A, lacks a reasonable basis, B, uh, is an unreasonable position, then of course you shouldn't be taking that position on the tax return. Now we talked about before that there could be areas that are gray areas. We talked about the hierarchy of, of uh, resources in terms of the Internal Revenue Code and then, uh, and then other you know, regulations uh, issued by the IRS and court cases and the fact there, are, there will be kind of gray areas. So you might not be completely sure. You, this doesn't mean that you can say this position, I'm not 100% sure that would hold up within an audit, 
that's not the, the rules we're looking for because there could be positions, of course, that we're not 100% sure of because they're not completely covered by the code. But uh, th this would be like the terminology, the guidance that you're basically looking for here. So you can't take a position that, that once again, let's read the whole thing. A practitioner may not willfully, recklessly, or through gross incompetence assign a tax return or claim for refund that the practitioner knows or reasonably should know contains positions that a lacks a reasonable basis b is an unreasonable position as described in section 6694a2 of the internal revenue code including the related regulations and other publications guidance so c uh, is a willful attempt by the practitioner to under to understate the liability for tax or a reckless or in intentional disregard of the rules or regulations by the practitioner as described in section 6694 of the code included the related regulations. So again, notice the terminology often present in the law, the willful attempt. That term willful and these kind of things that are geared towards intent are difficult to kind of define uh, you know, or prove like in practice, but obviously, they're important in the law. But notice if it's not exactly uh, willful, you also have the term reckless, right? So you oftentimes you can say, well, did they do that? Did you did you take a position that was clearly wrong? Okay, did you do it recklessly? Like you just didn't, you, you know, you didn't take the time to consider. And if you did, a reasonable per old person would have would have made a different decision possibly or willful you did it on purpose, that would typically be worse generally, right? If it's willful, you knew the right path, you knew the right thing to do, and you willfully did otherwise. And so uh, advise a client to take a position on a tax return or claim for refund or prepare a portion of a tax return or claim for refund containing a position that A, lacks a reasonable basis, B, is an unreasonable position as described in section 6694A2 of the code, including the related regulations, other publication guidance, or C, is a willful attempt by the practitioner to understate the liability for tax or a reckless or intentional disregard of rules or regulations by the practitioner as described in section 6694B2 of the code.